Coming up on KUJH, I will be talking about Late Night in the Fog, October 1st, who the artist is, and how they will tackle the mask mandates in this stadium. Stay tuned. We are 128 days away from the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games. Not that I'm counting or anything. KU Women's Soccer will host the Sunflower Showdown tomorrow at Rock Chalk Park at 7 p.m. Ending with a final score of 52-33, Kansas quarterback Jason Bean ended the game with 323 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. The Jayhawk defense started lacking in the second half and allowed the Blue Devils to run away with the victory. Next Wednesday will kick off the start of the 2021 FIS Snowboard and Free Ski World Championships at the base of Buttermilk Mountain in Aspen, Colorado. Reporting live from the base of Buttermilk Mountain in Aspen, Colorado. As we look forward to the summer months, we are 100 days from the start of the 2021 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Check out his skills skiing at Copper Mountain in Colorado, training for the upcoming season. This week's NFL action is record-breaking as to what athletes around the world think about the upcoming games and how the events create a space for fans to come together. This ski season, things are looking a little different from last year. While we are still in a pandemic, ski areas like Aspen Snowmass are finding new ways to keep skiers happy and healthy while still enjoying their ski vacations. We had a nice little storm come through the night before. We were able to open up a lot of terrain and everybody's just excited to be open for the season. And now at Aspen Snowmass, it is mandatory to wear your mask on the gondola at all times. Safety is always important for me and I want to kind of come you know stay with what the county wants. Due to the warm weather and changing climate several mountains in the U.S. and especially Colorado have been lacking snow. Some ski resorts have had to delay their opening day but Aspen Snowmass found a way to blow snow in the colder temperatures at night and had over 3,000 acres open. Of course we always need more snow. It's I wish I had newer and sharper skis, but it's still fun regardless of the actual conditions. Despite the lack of snow, locals and visitors in Aspen were happy that the mountain opened on time. Exciting week as KU kicks off the start of Kansas men's and women's basketball this Friday with the 37th annual Late Night in the Fog. <laughs> Basketball is back, and so are the fans. COVID canceled last year's Late Night in the Fog, which only added to the sense of anticipation and excitement as fans and alums poured into Allen Fieldhouse, some for the first time. First so Late Night? Especially since last year's canceled, like, this is just the best. I'm so excited it's in person. Run DMC was this year's featured artist. Some dedicated alums covering some distance to be part of the party. We drove here from Denver this morning. We woke up at 6.30 a.m. We're super pumped. I haven't been here in like two years, so we're very excited post-COVID. Actor and Jayhawk alum Rob Riggle hosted the event, returning to Allen Fieldhouse, where he used to watch basketball as a student. And while some in attendance are focused on the fun, others are here to get a sneak peek of what's in store for KU basketball. I think the best part about it is uh... You know, we're back to uh, somewhat of normalcy. Everyone gets to be a uh, sellout crowd here and uh, hopefully see the uh, number one team in the country. Both the women's and the men's teams showed off their skills, scrimmaging with teammates, even demonstrating off-the-court skills, dancing with the spirit team, and having fun with their moves. I am here at the Lawrence Art in the Park Festival. This is an annual event that has been happening since 1964. There are local artists, live music, and food vendors. This event has, is located on South Park in Massachusetts Street. Lawrence Native, who grew up attending the festival, reflects on how art in the park has been special for his family. Now, as he makes jewelry with his daughter, he hopes to keep the family business and tradition going for years to come. Great way for us to collaborate and do something together, something creative together. 
Like the Young family, our In the Park is so much more than just making money. Food vendor Esteban Polanco explains how he wants to expand his popsicle business by making more local product for communities. We're at Poly Paletas, Mexican popsicles. We got uh, over 18 different flavors here. We're trying to uh, introduce paletas to our community. So uh, this upcoming year, hopefully, we can start producing our own product. Our machinery is on, on order already, and we like to produce local products. There are also students who have never been to the festival and got the chance to explore the art in the park today in downtown Lawrence. I decided to walk around after getting breakfast. I am enjoying it. I've seen a lot of cool things already. This is Madison Osborne Lowe reporting for KUJH.